You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it prepares to launch at 12.45 p.m. Eastern Time from historic Pad 39A and Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Good afternoon and welcome to the webcast of SpaceX's CRS-12 mission uh, to launch to resupply the International Space Station. My name is Tom Perdario and I'm a firmware engineer in the avionics department here at SpaceX. Now, today's mission will mark the final new Cargo Dragon spacecraft to visit the ISS with all future CRS launches from SpaceX to be conducted with reused Dragon spacecraft. Now on board Dragon today are 6,000 pounds of cargo, including food, crew provisions, medical supplies, fuel and air for the station, as well as a number of research experiments, which we'll talk about more during the webcast, or later on during the webcast. Uh, also today, after the Falcon 9 drops that Dragon spacecraft into orbit, the first stage will be uh, attempting to land at our LZ-1 landing zone back at Cape Canaveral, just a few miles south of Kennedy Space Center, where we're launching from today. On your screen, you can see a beautiful shot of Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Let's take a look at exactly what you can see on your screen right now. Uh, at the center of the screen is the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, this rocket is comprised of two main stages. That bottom two-thirds of the rocket or so is the first stage. This blasts the rocket off from liftoff in just about 11 minutes from now to about 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And then on top of that is the second stage, which takes the Dragon spacecraft the, west, the rest of the way into orbit. Uh, at the very top of the rocket, that nose cone looking thing at the very top, that is the Dragon and its trunk. That Dragon is currently loaded with about 6,000 pounds of supplies and experiments for the ISS. Uh, on the back of, this, of the view, you can see the uh, fixed service structure and rotating structure. These are left over from the shuttle era of this pad. Uh, mind you, today is an instantaneous launch window, so if we don't get a chance to launch at exactly 12.45 p.m. today, we will be having to attempt again on another day. Just a small correction, that is a liftoff at 12.31 p.m. Eastern Time today. <clears throat> now here at SpaceX, we conduct our go, no-go poll of the rocket at about T minus 78 minutes. This is when the launch director pulls all of the launch teams and makes sure that all systems in the rocket are good to go for a launch. So at T minus 78 minutes, we did have that go, no-go poll, and all systems are go for launch. Uh, we started loading liquid uh, rocket, or sorry, RP-1 fuel, that is our liquid kerosene fuel, into the rocket at about T minus 70 minutes, and then started loading our oxidizer liquid oxygen at about T minus 45 minutes. We're just about fu uh, full on both the RP-1 and liquid oxygen, and we'll be full uh, topped off at about T minus 5 and T minus 3 minutes, respectively. All in all, that is 1 million pounds total of rocket fuel and liquid oxygen. Our liquid helium pressurant uh, started loading at about T minus 23 minutes, so we're almost done with that. Uh, engine chill just started, or is just about to start at T minus 10 minutes. This is when we flush those engines with liquid oxygen and get them ready uh, to receive their cryogenic propellants. Uh, right now, weather is looking fantastic, as you can see on the camera. Uh, we monitor a few uh, weather conditions here for launch. One of them is anvil clouds and lightning. Obviously, those look uh, pretty good right now. Uh, no, no lightning in sight at the Cape. Uh, other things that we monitor are low-level winds and upper-altitude winds. Uh, both of those are looking fantastic. We just had a report back from the uh, launch, from the weather balloons that we launch about every 30 minutes, and upper-altitude winds are looking pretty great. So with the Falcon 9 getting ready to launch, let's talk about what's on board the Dragon today. Uh, in addition to the food, water, and provisions for the crew, there's also a bunch of very interesting science experiments going up today. Uh, one of which is an augmented reality system to help the crew better organize their tasks and equipment storage on board the station. There's also a circadian rhythm experiment that's designed to allow scientists to observe how the crew reacts to the rapid changes in the day and night cycles on board the station. 
in terms of scientific equipment. Uh, today, the Dragon is bringing up what's called the Cosmic Ray Energetics and Mass Experiment, or CREAM. And this is a highly sensitive cosmic ray energy detector uh, for measuring the cosmic ray backgrounds of outer space. Uh, we also have a protein crystallization experiment, which is designed to observe protein behaviors in microgravity in order to learn more about the causes of Parkinson's disease. Also going up today is a commercial supercomputer experiment that's designed to test the latest generation of commercial electronics against the harsh radiation effects of space. Now, most of this cargo is loaded well in advance of the launch date. However, we do have what's called a late load period, about six hours before the rocket launches. Uh, as you can see here, that late load period uh, happens while the rocket is still horizontal on top of the transporter erector. This gives SpaceX engineers a last minute chance to load any cargo that is extremely time sensitive. This includes anything that's refrigerated or any science experiments that need to be prepared right up until uh, the launch day. So engineers can load those supplies through the forward hatch of the Dragon. Once that forward hatch is secured with all of the late load cargo, the Dragon is then buttoned up to protect it from the harsh environment of uh, launch and liftoff. And then the rocket is, is rolled up to the launch pad and hoisted vertical. Like I was saying earlier, uh, this is a instantaneous launch window. Uh, we have to launch at exactly 1231 Eastern time. If we don't, uh, we're going to be attempting to again at the earliest possible time. Uh, so uh, the, once we launch that Dragon to orbit, the first stage of the rocket is going to be coming back towards landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. That first stage is going to turn around and execute three burn maneuvers. The first burn maneuver is what's known as a boost back burn. This just cancels out all of the horizontal velocity the rocket picked up on its way to orbit and sends it back towards Cape Canaveral. After that boost back burn, there's another burn called the re-entry burn. Uh, this happens just as the rocket is approaching the top of the atmosphere to slow it down and make sure that that thick atmosphere doesn't damage the engines on its way back down. And then finally, right before the rocket hits the, or gets towards the pad, uh, we fire the engines one more time in what's known as a landing burn. This takes the rocket from just about a few hundred meters off the pad all the way down to a soft touchdown at LZ-1 in Cape Canaveral. just got a notification that stage one fuel load is complete and the rocket is looking go for launch. Uh, all of our weather indications are looking fantastic right now. Earlier today we were uh, holding or we were observing an 80% chance of favorable launch conditions and it looks like that prediction is holding true. Like I was saying, box load and RP1 is complete. At about T minus one minute, the rocket is going to uh, be turned over into auto sequence mode. This is when the rocket's internal computers uh, have full control over the launch procedure, starting at T minus one minute, all the way down to liftoff. We're still getting uh, clearance from the range. It sounds like range is go for a launch today. white steam looking stuff you see coming out of the rocket is just that liquid oxygen as it slowly boils off. Uh, <clears throat> that liquid oxygen is just on the inside of those tanks and the hot, humid Florida air is on the outside. So as we continue topping up on uh, liquid oxygen, a little bit boils off and it's released to form that gaseous white cloud. Still getting indications that weather is go for launch and the rocket is looking fantastic. In these final moments, Dragon is also performing final checkouts to make sure that all of its primary systems will work as soon as it's released from the, uh, from the Falcon 9 rocket. At this moment, the cradle arms are opening at the top of that transporter erector tower just to the left of the rocket. 
in the final moments before liftoff, that transporter erector tower just to the left of the rocket is going to lean back so that the rocket can clear it as it begins descent into the atmosphere. So with just about T minus three minutes to go, we're going to turn it over to the pad and the nets and listen as the rocket prepares to lift off at 12.31 p.m. Stop at some position for T0, 88.3 degrees. Copy that. In Auckland, just so you know, you, there's a lot of background noise on your phone. T minus two minutes. Stage two locks load closed out. Vehicles and self line. Ground side gas closeouts have started. AFTS is ready for launch. BCDC verify Falcon 9 and Dragon are in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in startup. Gas close, that's complete. LD, verify, go for launch. Go for launch. T minus 30. Minus 20. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off of the Falcon 9. Falcon 9 is over the tower. Move to 39A and uh, to uh, post operations. Copy, we'll go. You are watching the Falcon 9 rocket carrying the Dragon spacecraft as it ascends through the atmosphere en route to the International Space Station after a successful liftoff from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The vehicle has just passed through supersonic territory. And the vehicle has also just passed through max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle sees during its ascent through the atmosphere. In 
just about 45 seconds now. Uh, the first stage is going to go through a few maneuvers, all in very uh, close succession. The first of those is going to be main engine cutoff. It's when those nine Merlin engines at the bottom of the first stage stop thrusting. Immediately after that, the first stage is going to separate from the second stage, and then immediately after that, the second stage's single Merlin vacuum engine is going to ignite and prepare to accelerate the Dragon spacecraft the rest of the way towards the orbit of the International Space Station. You can see those exhaust gases from the Falcon 9 expanding in the upper atmosphere. Stand by for Miko in just about five seconds. And as you can see, the main engines have cut off from the first stage, and we have confirmation of a successful separation. Just waiting for that second engine to start up. As you can hear from the uh, crowd cheering downstairs, it sounds like we've had a successful separation and a successful ignition of that upper stage engine. Now on your screen right now, you can see uh, that second stage on the right-hand side as it accelerates towards the International Space Station. However, on the left-hand side, you're looking at a view from the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, that first stage just completed its boost back burn, which thrusts it back towards Cape Canaveral and gets it ready for a landing. We can follow along with its process back towards LZ-1 on the left-hand side and follow along with Dragon and the second stage progress on the right-hand side. Just had confirmation that the Dragon's nose cone deploy, that is the uh, shield on top of the Dragon that protects the hatch and the forward bulkhead from any uh, aer aerodynamic pressures. Uh, now that we're out of the atmosphere, we don't need it anymore, so we just pop it off. Getting confirmation from our GNC department that trajectory of the second stage is nominal. On your left-hand side, you can see those grid fins deploying on the first stage. Those grid fins uh, are used to control the first stage as it descends down through the atmosphere. Just had confirmation of a successful boost back burn shutdown as well. Periodically on the left hand side, you'll see uh, jets of gas. These are cold gas thrusters. Uh, in addition to those grid fins, those cold gas thrusters allow that first stage to control its descent so that it can pinpoint land in the center of LZ 1. And on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see that second stage nozzle glowing hot with those exhaust gases. That second stage is currently accelerating nominally towards the ISS. We've just acquired signal as well from our Bermuda tracking station. SpaceX has tracking stations situated all over the world so we can maintain constant contact with the second stage engine as it orbits the Earth. That first stage uh, is about one minute away from the entry burn. Uh, you can see the coast of Florida in the left-hand side of your screen as the stage comes back down towards land. Um, it's still in the very upper regions of the atmosphere where air is very thin, um, but before it hits the thicker atmosphere portions, uh, we do, are going to light those engines once again to slow it down just a little bit so it doesn't burn up on its way down towards Cape Canaveral. This is a beautiful shot uh, from space of Cape Canaveral. Uh, you can see the white dots of clouds uh, that we just launched through. We should be able to get clear video all the way back down towards landing zone one. On the right hand screen, uh, you're seeing a camera shot from our pad at LZ-1. And the entry burn has just started. That Falcon 9 is currently thrusting its way uh, just to slow itself down. Entry burn lasts about a minute. Excuse me, about 10 seconds. <laughs> and entry burn has just completed. That was successful. 
For those of us just joining, on the left-hand side, we have a camera on the first stage as it descends, and on the right-hand side, we have a camera on the ground tracking that first stage as it makes its way back. You can see the rocket start to vibrate around as it hits the thicker parts of the atmosphere. In about 10 seconds, that center Merlin engine is going to ignite once more and set the rocket down as gently as possible at the pad at LZ-1. Landing burn has begun. On the left-hand side, you can see the uh, first stage approaching the pad. And on the right-hand side, you see the pad shot. Let's watch it land. SpaceX. Uh, this is exactly what we try to do with all of our rocket, or most of our rockets now these days. Um, so uh, while we all are uh, very excited about this successful landing, it's important to note that the main objective today is still not complete. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that second stage continually accelerating itself and the Dragon spacecraft towards the International Space Station. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get our confirmation uh, that the second stage engine cutoff is about to happen soon. Uh, this is when that second stage engine uh, finishes its main burn, finishes accelerating a Dragon most of the way towards the ISS. And then after that burn is complete, the Dragon will then separate from the second stage and then begin its own preparations uh, as it goes towards the ISS. Now the Dragon doesn't go straight to the International Space Station. Um, it actually has a 36-hour uh, maneuvering period from its separation until it hits the ISS. You can visualize this as us catching up with the ISS as it orbits around the Earth. Uh, as you can see from this animation, the ISS circles the Earth at low Earth orbit. Um, and then what we do is we launch the Dragon from Cape Canaveral in Florida. That first stage separates and comes back for a landing, as it just did. The second stage burns again and accelerates the Dragon towards the ISS. And then the Dragon pops off and separates from the second stage. Uh, deploys its solar panels like it will in a few minutes, and then over the next 36 hours, uh, thrusts very incrementally and slowly as it gradually boosts its orbit closer and closer to match that of the ISS until the robotic Canada arm can grab it and pull it in. And so we just had uh, confirmation of a good orbit and a second stage engine shutdown. Uh, this means the Dragon is exactly where we planned it to be, uh, where we wanted it to be in that orbit. Uh, this is fantastic news. Uh, it's still not quite done yet, we have a few other events coming up in quick succession here. The first is going to be Dragon deployment. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see a camera uh, pointing from the top of the second stage up into the trunk of the Dragon. We should be able to see that. Oh, there it goes. Dragon has successfully deployed. <clears throat> As you can see, this is big news for the crowd down there. Uh, it means the Dragon is happy and in orbit. In about, t about one minute from now, uh, the protective covers on either side of the Dragon's trunk, which carry its solar panels, uh, are going to pop off in about 30 seconds. And uh, those solar panels are going to deploy so the Dragon can charge its solar panels on its way to the ISS. Right now on your screen you can see that second stage engine nozzle uh, after having completed its mission of bringing the Dragon to a low Earth orbit. So we may not have uh, telemetry from that second stage, <clears throat> video telemetry, all the way until the solar deploy. Uh, solar array deploy should be happening in just a few seconds right now, but I uh, can't guarantee that we'll have a good enough link to have video of it. So 
So we're just standing by to get confirmation from Dragon that the solar arrays have deployed properly. Oh, there it is. There's a shot of those solar arrays before deployment. Got about another 40 seconds before those solar arrays deploy. Uh, right now, it looks like this is a view of a camera mounted inside the solar array compartments. Deployment should be any second now. And there it is. Uh, as you can see, those are the solar arrays of dragons slowly unfolding. Looks like a successful solar array deploy. Dragon's propulsion system is also primed and ready to thrust its way towards the ISS. Those solar arrays allow the Dragon to stay topped off on its batteries in a 36-hour journey to the International Space Station. Now, Dragon's journey to the space station is right now far from over. Um, that those Dragon has about 36 hours of slow maneuvering, uh, inching closer and closer to the space station until it's close enough to be grabbed by the robotic cannon arm on the station. Uh, however, while Dragon still has a long way to go, uh, this is going to bring our webcast to a close today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, we'd like to thank our customer, NASA, for allowing us to perform yet another commercial resupply services, our 12th here at SpaceX. Um, we'd like to uh, thank the viewers here for tuning in, the FAA and the range. Um, today we had a successful launch right on time at 12.31 p.m. from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We had a successful stage separation, a successful landing of the Falcon 9 first stage, and a successful Dragon deployment from that second stage. Uh, please keep in touch with SpaceX on our social media feeds and also SpaceX.com so that you can follow Dragon's progress to the International Space Station over the next 36 hours. Thank you so much for watching.